He's come into the side, Juan Bissaka, and he's done really well, the young man. Juan Bissaka, great skill. Since coming into the team, he's been absolutely brilliant. He's played against some top-class players, and he looks right at home in the Crystal Palace back four. I was born in Croydon, New Addington. There was a field outside my house, which was called Wharton Green. And we just used to kick about, about there. There was about 20 players that used to just go on the field and just play football. So even then, were you better than everyone else? Was that better? Everyone was, there was a good player, a lot of good players there. Yeah, I wouldn't say better than everyone, but a few players, yeah. What kind of player would you have been then? I was a striker then. I think for all seasons, whilst I was there, I was top scorer. So yeah, that was a good feeling. So at any point then, were you, did you do any defending? <laughs> no, not at all. No, I don't like defending then. Just I like scoring. What were you like as a person back then when you were young? Same, quiet, <laughs> so I just get on with it. Um, at age 11, I was scouted and I was told that I had a training session at Crystal Palace. And then from there, that's where it started. Came in as 10, 10 or 11 year old boy. November birthday, quite, quite leggy, quite, quite slight in build and very, very quiet. My abiding memory is an absolute love for the game. Really competitive, probably uncommon for a, a, a winger or a number nine. As you probably know, he played higher up the pitch. I guess, I guess he was in the, in the pack. He was spoken about, but just in the pack in his younger days, um, between under, under 12 and under 14. But at under 15, people really started speaking about it. First saw Aaron at the National Sports Centre at Crystal Palace in their most salubrious of surroundings. First impression of Aaron, uh, I think had his hair braided and was just tall. Thin, skinny guy, very quiet, but technically was very good in at that age. And uh, but it was quite a quite a tough group in terms of they're quite boisterous, had a lot to say for themselves. But Aaron was always a quiet one out of the group. But he's probably up there in terms of causing causing trouble. There's no doubt about that. But he was very quiet with it. But looking past that, he was he was a very good footballer. And I really enjoyed the year I had him in the under 16s. He was terrific to be fair, towards the end of the season, and he was a big part of it, being a highly successful group. There was a couple of times he never turned up for games, a couple of times he was late and he'd phone me and tell me he was late, but you sort of just persevere with that. They're youngsters, and then when I took the 23s job a year and a half ago, I had the fortune to, to bond with him again in 23s with that same group I had in the 16s, so I knew the group really well. Playing on the wing, yeah, when, when I had him in the 16s, he was, he was, a, he was a left winger. He went right wing. Um, I think he's played a few positions. He's one of the, he's one of these people, Aaron. He's 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 a good football player. Now, I think you could play him as a midfield player. And he'd still do a good job. But he was always a real solid seven out of ten sort of player you could rely on week in week out. I'd seen Aaron quite a few times. He'd been playing right right wing, right midfield, and doing okay without really pulling up any trees. Most of the time on a Thursday you'll do a 10v10 and you may be two, three, maybe four players short. You're always using the under 23 players but in different positions. And you'd say, oh, I need two or three players to, to Richard Shaw. And then one Thursday um, we were short of a right back. So I said, well, just send Aaron. He'll have to play right back for against the first team. And then he came over and I can remember watching the session and after the session I thought to myself, I did all right at right back. You know, it was a bit start, stop start, it's always coached on a Thursday. So I think it was the following week, I said, oh, I'll take Aaron again. And Richard said, well, I've got you right back. I said, no, I'll, t I'll take Aaron again and, and play him right back. And it was that week that he, he played against Wilf. And in, in my opinion, Wilf is up there as one of the best home produced players in the, in the Premier League at the moment. And Aaron had this morning where Wilf didn't get by him once. Wilf doesn't like losing at all. So. You know, if he doesn't skip by people like he normally does in training, he can get quite frustrated because you get a little respect, obviously. Wilf would have had a little bit, oh, I didn't get by him. I was kind of shocked by how good he was when I played against him. I've played against a few decent right backs, to be honest, and he's one of them. Like, you may go past him, but he always manages to get a last ditch tackle in. He's a fantastic athlete, very, very quick. He's got enough power and strength, and I think that'll come even more. I don't understand how you go from a winger to a right back, though. Do you know what I mean? Because he's so good at defending, do you know what I mean? So I don't understand how, but yeah, I think that's his natural position, man. My coaching brain started working a little bit, and I said to, to Richard Shaw, I think next time you have a reserve game, you should play Aaron right back. 
And then from then on, every time we needed a, a right back, we'd bring him over. And whether it was against Wilf or whether it was against Andros, you know, you're talking about world-class international players. He always did really, really well defensively. So it just grew from there. And then I think that was just before Christmas. And for the rest of the season, Richard played him right back in the uh, under-23s. And I'm really glad to see that he's kicked on from there and managed to break into the first team and he's doing so well. He really learned his trade, I'd say, from February onwards. I think we played Charlton away at Greenwich and he played right back and uh, he kept getting caught with the ball inside him a few times. It would have been the easiest thing would have been to not play him at right back and think, man, he's had to go right back, he's not quite working. But we stuck with it. You know, I'd, I'd sacrifice all them games I ever played right back and, and we didn't do too well. I'd sacrifice all them games for what Aaron's done. And that, for me, is, is, is development. I saw him most of all in the under-23s to start with. I thought he was a very dogged defender, a very disciplined defender, good in the 1v1 situations. Good athlete, good getting forward, anxious to get forward as well. And of course we then started using him sporadically in the first team when there was a, a gap. I think it was two days before the um, window shut. I came in to um, see the gaffer on my day off to ask him if I could go and learn to get some experience. And he, was, he told me he didn't want me to go. So I just took it under the chin and just stayed and just continued training hard until I got my chance. And then when Joel Ward got injured and we didn't have quite so many right backs competing for a spot, it was the right time we thought to bring him in. And once we brought him into the first team squad, he established himself immediately as a, not just a player on the fringes of the team, but a player who could quite easily play in the team. And the next step then was to give him his chance. And then it was up to him to take it, which of course he did. So a big chance for young Aaron wan Bisaki at right back. He's just 20 years of age and makes his Crystal Palace debut. I remember walking out of the tunnel and the atmosphere of the fans, how loud it was, it was a good feeling. When you play your first match in the first team in a, a, a club that you've been playing for for nine years, so you've come all the way through the ranks, it must be quite a nerve-wracking occasion. And then to have to go out and do that against the Tottenham Hotspur, I think it was the first game, and, then in your next games, are games like Liverpool and Manchester United, and games of that sort of stature, I suppose I should be surprised that he's done so well. And I suppose I should say he's exceeded expectations, but only because I think we, we gave him a very tough task to play against those teams, to play against the quality of players that he's played against. And, uh, He's handled it so well, but we had no doubt that he could do it. Myself and Redders would talk about it. We sit in this office and we say, I was playing against May United and we both just started kicking like little kids. And we were just so proud and so pleased for him. But one thing he never did, he never phased, he never phased me. I, I remember watching the game and because I know what Aaron's temperament's like, he's such a cool customer. Nothing phases him. Unless you speak to him, he will not say a word. Like literally he's in the change room, quiet, but he does his speaking on the pitch, really, and I think that's why everyone likes him. He doesn't really chirp up much. He just comes in, does what he has to do, plays his game, plays well, and just goes home, really. The games that he's come in, like the players that he's played against, I was kind of shocked because it's just like, oh, OK, he's playing against Sanchez today. He just deals with it casually. So I like his mentality. Like, that's how, that's how I am when I go on a pitch. Like, no matter what kit you're wearing, I will not fear your team just because of what you're wearing, do you know what I mean? I'll play the same way I play, and that's how I feel he does. Like, he'll take on whoever, he'll tackle whoever, so that's why I rate him as much as I do. I saw his debut on the telly. I managed to see him there and it brought me a little smile on my face. I thought, yeah, I had a little bit to do with that. There were times he drove me mad. I'll be honest with you, but he always had this innocence about him and I think there's a few of the other boys as well, he's quite easily led. I know away from football he's a very happy guy, but what he has done in recent months is he's, he's really focused on his football and I think you can tell that now. I think he's starting to grasp exactly what professional football is all about. How do you relax? Gym, or chill at home, or I'll go out in O2. 
spend, spend some hours there. I've been here for like for six months now. You know, it's quite quiet, it's nice. You know, I moved here to be around a different environment, you know, quiet and get on my day, no distractions really. To watch Aaron now, you know, he was four or five games in and he's got his call up with England under 20s. Um, it, it's all worth it and that's sort of why you do it because I've been where Aaron's been and all I could do is pass on my advice. If you say the same message day in, day out, do they listen? The good ones do. Yeah, the bad ones will fall away unfortunately, but but yeah, I you feel immensely proud of, of what Aaron's achieved so far, but literally yes so far. Hopefully he will have a long and successful career. And hopefully the guys below that we have now will see that and hopefully that'll give them some inspiration. I feel excited, you know, it's good, you know. I've been here for many years and I'm just happy to stay. I just carry on with my football and you know I just want to keep going.